We're continuing on. I believe this will be the last installment, even though I felt maybe last night as I was, as I was uh, preparing for this message, I felt that God might extend it just a little bit because of the importance of um, this topic. And it's not only a topic, it's a lifestyle um, um, of rest. And we have been already on, this will be our fourth week, I believe, on rest. How many of y'all like to rest? Amen. How many of y'all like to take naps? Any nappers in this house? Yeah? All right. It's, it, it's good to take a nap. It really is. Now, a nap is not three hours long. You went to bed. If, if you slept for three, you went to sleep. Uh, no, <clears throat> nap is where you take about a 30-minute nap. How many of y'all take 30? How many an hour? An hour? An hour? 45 minutes? 30? See, that's a nap. Anything after that, you went to sleep. All right. Praise God. You guys with me this morning? Yeah. Well, listen, and here's the idea <clears throat> that sleep and rest are not the same. Sleeping and resting are not the same because people can go to sleep and not rest. Wake up as tired as I'll get out in the morning and you slept 12 hours. Lord Jesus. But you tossed and turned, you were dreaming, you were talking in your sleep, you were arguing with yourself, you were fighting with the pillow, you couldn't go to sleep, you kept getting up to the bathroom. See, you, you go to sleep, but you don't rest. But the only one who can give you rest is the Lord of rest. Not the Lord of rings, the Lord of rest. Are you with me? The Lord of the Sabbath. Do y'all know who the Lord of the Sabbath is? His name starts with a J and ends with an S. <laughs> Jesus. He is the Lord of rest. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And listen, when you enter into him, now you can rest whether you sleep for two hours or sleep for five hours or sleep for 10 hours or work for two hours or work for 15 hours. That has nothing to do with you resting in him. Now, last Sunday, I taught on the rest robbers. Y'all remember the rest robber? Was where you, don't, where you don't know how to cast your cares onto the Lord because he cares for you. And it's not just cares, it's worries, anxieties, and concerns. Those are rest robbers because what happens, too many people are trying to carry the burdens, are trying to carry the weight of other people, are trying to carry the frustration. You're trying to carry the concerns that really don't concern you. You're trying to carry things that are too heavy. They're too weighty. It's too much for you. And you haven't learned how to cast, throw, chunk fling and give your cares to the Lord. <laughs> and when you learn how to do that, you guys, you, you're going to find out here in a minute that word learn is very big when it comes to our relationship with Jesus. Because it's not just about you coming to know Jesus, getting your salvation, and then that's it. For the rest of the time, you're just going to sit around and do nothing. That's not what it's about. There is a learning process that has to happen in your relationship with Jesus. Because he wants to teach you how to have rest. Are you with me? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Turn with me there. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28. In the King James translation. And you'll see how Jesus uh, talks about rest in this scripture. All right. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. King James. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor. We got any laborers in this house? We got any workers in this house? You have a job, you go work, you labor. All right. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I, Jesus said, will give you rest. So notice that there is rest that Jesus has for you. But there's something that we got to do to get it. What is it? Come unto him. Now, how many in here have come unto Jesus to get your salvation? Amen. How many of y'all saved in this house? Lift your hands up. Come on, if you're saved in this house. All right, good. So you are a born-again believer. You are a new creation in Christ, right? Yes. Okay. So did, did, did it come to you all of a sudden? Like you just woke up one day and like, you know what? I'm just going to come to Jesus and I'm going to get saved. Is that how it happened? No, no, you had a, somebody had to come talk to you about Jesus and then somebody had to invite you or somebody had to encourage you having to do with Jesus. And then you what? 
came to him. Is that right? And when you came to him, you received salvation, right? All right, and that's the salvation process. Now, watch this. On a daily basis, because he says he will give you daily bread. Am I right? Daily bread, right? The prayer, right? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Come on, I used to be Catholic too. I, we used to pray that all the time. And so, uh, now, you, give, you get this, right? So he gives us daily bread. But watch this. He also gives you daily rest. Because how many of you know we live in a world that does not pursue after Jesus? Okay? Now, we live in a world who's going to try to consume you with its ideas. Did y'all know that? Okay? See, here's one of the things that we got to understand. God never intended for us to depend on the world system. He never intended for the world system to provide for his family. You are his children, right? Are we here? Okay. God never intended for the world system to provide for his children. Our provision comes from him. What the world system has to offer are tools, not provision. We are not to use the world system as a crutch. But what happens, we were trained up that way until we met Jesus. So when you came to Jesus, now there was a new way of doing things. But what happens, we try to mix the old and the new together, and it doesn't work. So you'll never get rest uh, uh, through the world system. You'll never get rest through that system because that system is always trying to take from you, always trying to uh, take advantage of you, always trying to use you, always trying to see what they can get from you and never give back. So you're always working, laboring, 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 laboring. Well, you haven't worked enough. You're not good enough. Well, when can I get that raise, boss? Well, once you've met the criteria, once you've met the quota, then maybe we'll think about giving you a bonus. You ever been there before? Like you're the one that works the hardest, yet everybody else is getting bonuses. Everybody else is moving up the ladder. But you're like, man, where am I at? Because you are not designed to function according to that system. You are designed to function according to the kingdom system. Where you have a boss who is good to his employees. Who you have a father who is good to his children. You have a savior who is good to his salvationers. Oh, is that a word? Are you with me? So when you enter into him, you can rest. When you cast your cares onto him, you can rest. Watch this. Look at this in the Amplified Translation. Let's look at this, I believe. Let me go over here. Boy, we're fixing it. We're going to learn some stuff here this morning. Are y'all ready? Yeah, we're still in the turkey mode, right? We'll get you out here in a minute. We'll, you'll, that turkey will fly this morning. Turkeys don't fly, but they'll fly this morning. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty eight. Look at the Amplified. It says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. Oof. Sometimes sickness can overburden you. Are you with me? You talk to somebody who has cancer. See if they're not stressing out in their mind and fear. Are you with me? Right? You talk to somebody who has HIV and see, you'll, you'll, you'll see what overburdened is because that's what happens sometimes, right? So, all right. So come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you. I will cause you to rest. See, I will cause you. That's an action. That's a reaction right there. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Praise God. Now, what is your soul? Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It's our mind. Too many times we're thinking things to try to, how can we do this? How can we do that? You're really, you're, try, you're, you're, you're thinking too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're spinning your wheels and not getting anywhere. If you would just cast that care onto him, you'll see how you'll receive that rest. Praise God. You'll, 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 you'll receive ease, relieve, and refresh. He says, take my yoke upon you, watch this, and learn of me. Remember I told you that word learn. 
You have to learn. Once you step into a relationship with Jesus, yeah, you got salvation, but you still have to go through another set of doors. Like at Walmart, you know, you first walk into that first set of doors where it's got the cards and it's got the little game and it's got the movies and you can make a key. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, you walk through the first set of doors, boom, you're in Walmart. Wow, there I am. But you got a second set of doors that has all the product. If we don't learn how to go through the second set of doors, and, and listen to, and watch this. Those are open doors. And I'm telling you this right now. When, when, God, when you understand that God opens doors for you, the, God, the door that God opens does not have doorknobs. It's a sensor. Just like at Walmart. You don't have to open a door for people at Walmart. The doors open up by themselves once it senses that it's you. Are you with me? You enter into those doors, and now what's there? Man, it's the product. But see, in the kingdom, in the world system, it's financial. It's money. It's a, it's a barter system. It's, it's, it's sell and buy. It's that system, the world system, right? But in the kingdom system, when you walk into that second set of doors, it's faith. Faith is the currency by which you and I obtain what God has for us in this relationship with him. Are you with me? It's faith. Someone say faith with me. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest. You will find relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. That's so good right there. Praise God. To me, I like quietness. I know it probably, you probably don't think I do, but I really do. My wife's like, you even talk in your sleep. She's always asked me, what were you dreaming about last night? I was like, I don't know. She's like, you were talking in your sleep last night. You were trying to figure something out. And I was like, man, even in my sleep I talk. But I do like my quietness. How many of y'all like peace in this house? Because, like, if there's too much going on inside of a house, boy, it sounds too chaotic, too much running around, too much noise, people talking loud. I'm just like, I need to get out. Or we need to shut this place. Everybody just shh, quiet. Because I like rest. We ought to like rest. Because Jesus is our rest, right? And we got to enter into this rest. Because for the rest of this year, which is only a little over a month, we want to experience rest in our lives. Because rest is powerful. Watch this. Uh, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, humble. You will find rest, relief. And it says, uh, for my yoke is wholesome. It is useful. It is good. It's not harsh. It's not hard. It's not sharp or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to born praise God so see this is all what God has for you that you can actually have this life you can have it see too many times we're we're too connected to people because we were trained up that way we're trained up to be dependent on our parents we're trained up to be dependent on people We're, we're we were trained up to be dependent on the things that really can't give nothing back to us in a way that we would like for for them to give back to us why because we're children of God See, children of God always want provision for their lives. They, they, they want, and so, but what happens is that we're, we're wanting it from the wrong source. And so when we try to get it from the wrong source, then rest doesn't show up. Instead, frustration shows up. Instead, chaos shows up. Instead, shortcomings show up. Instead, um, uh, what's that word? Um, it's not where you're mad at somebody, but where you're... Uh, not frustrated, there's another word, where, where they don't meet your needs and you are like, what is it, dissatisfied? Disappointed. Disappointments show up. Thank you. Disappointments show up in your life because the, you're focused on the wrong source. See, this, the horizontal relationship, can be met if you have the vertical relationship going first. Are you with me? Instead of it going this way, we need to go this way. Watch this, even, even, even closer, this way. Because you have rest, Jesus, you come unto me, he'll give you rest. You have rest living inside of you. 
that you really don't have to look to heaven to try to get your answer. You got to look at the place where heaven was planted. It was right here inside of each and every one of us. You have rest inside you. Are you with me? Yeah. Look at the message translation. What's this? It says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Sound like a commercial, right? Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burnt out? <laughs> like, are you burnt out on religion? It says, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Watch, look at this next word. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Again, guys, listen, to, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, you know, teachings that will teach you that, you know, you need to go through the struggle, and you need to go through the pain, and you need to go through all this, the suffering, right? But the same thing is, did you guys go through a crucifixion? Did anybody here go through a crucifixion? Anybody? Because you probably wouldn't be here if you did. But notice that the suffering, Jesus did it. He did it for us. Okay? As a matter of fact, he even went to hell for us. Did you know that? He did. He went down to the center of the earth, got back the keys from the devil, boom, and then gave them to who? To us. Right? See, you're the key holder. You're the key holder. He's put it inside you. You have rest available to you because you have the key available to you. The keys were given to you. See, we don't have to go through the sufferings and all this. Jesus already did that, just like he went through the crucifixion. The Bible says that if you come to him, you were crucified with him on that cross. That means you already went through a crucifixion without even going through it. <laughs> that is something to be thankful about. Thank you, God, that I didn't have to go through no crucifixion, because some of you on here can't even stand a mosquito bite, much less a nail going through your hands. Or your feet. Or nails being planted all around your head. Are you with me? No, no, not me. I'm like, uh-uh. Don't, don't, my wife, I don't like needles. She don't like needles. I don't either. Any, any here like needles? No? Nobody likes to go get draw, blood drawn out of you? No. But see, Jesus did that for us. But he did that so that he can put something inside you. And what is inside you is Rest. You ought to have a life every single day that you can have rest, that you can have rest. You don't always have to be fighting. You don't always have to be struggling. You don't always have to be wrestling. You don't always have to be pushing and pressure and this and that. If you do, but most people do, but you're not supposed to. You're supposed to enter into his rest where you can be at peace, where you can think straight where you can handle situations, where you can use wisdom, where you can get what you need for your family, where you can go out there and do what you need to do without being frustrated because that's one of the things that the devil is going to try to take from you is a sound mind. People who are not in rest, they're thinking, thinking, thinking all the time, racing, racing. There's always thoughts going on in their head. They can't rest, rest, rest. No, no, it's time for you to enter into your rest. And get what God wants to give you. Because he's going to give it to you. Rest. Are you with me? Someone say rest. Watch, well, look at this. So learn. So we have to learn to do this. Uh, John 14, 6 through 7. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by through me. If you had known, had learned to recognize me, you would have also have known my Father. From now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Now watch this. Matthew 12, 1 through 8. There is a story about how the religious uh, people were seeing what Jesus was doing with his disciples. They seen that the disciples were doing something, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees questioned Jesus about his team, about his group. And they, and they were asking him a question. Watch this. Let's look at the story here. Matthew 12, 1 through 8, Amplified. At that particular time, Jesus went through the fields of standing grain on the Sabbath. All right? And his disciples were hungry, and they began to pick up the spikes of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, See there, your disciples are doing what is unlawful and not permitted on the 
Sabbath. He said to them, have you not even read? Jesus told him, have you not even read what David did when he was hungry and those who accompanied him, how he went into the house of God and ate the loaves of the showbread, which is not lawful for him to eat, nor for the men who accompanied him, but for the priests only? Or have you never read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple violate the sanctity of the Sabbath, breaking it, and yet are guiltless. So he was reminding them of some of the things they were familiar with. And yet David didn't get in trouble for it. You're not supposed to eat the communion because you're hungry. But Jesus reminded him, do you not remember when David did that? Him and his people, they went into the temple and they got the communion bread and started eating it because they were hungry. And then don't you remember that the priests did the same thing? And so what's funny is that when Jesus shows up in your life, Jesus breaks rules that you were used to. Jesus breaks rules, too. I hope you know that. Because he was breaking those rules right there. They're not supposed to be doing that. Look at your disciples. Look what they're doing. They're doing something on the Sabbath. See, we have constructed and construed our own rules in the whole entire time that we never served Jesus. And so then we live by those traditions and we live by those ways of going and doing things. And, and when Jesus shows up, he'll completely flip that whole thing around. You won't do things the way you used to. Yeah, you don't, you, you, when, when they, back in the day, if somebody slapped you, Brother Stephen, you're, you're, you're a big boy. If I came up to you, bro, and just slapped you. Let's try it. No, no. So, no, 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 I'm just kidding. No, I know you probably, like, I'll be knocked out. So, but back in the day, before you knew Jesus, if somebody slapped you, I, I probably more likely you'd slap him back. Maybe punch him. Like, out of reaction, instantly, boom, right? Yeah. But see, then Jesus tells you, he changes it up. He says, no, nah, man, if, if, you, if they slap you in one cheek, give him the other one. See, he, he, he changes it up, breaks the rules, like, but that's not fair, Jesus. He's like, yeah, but you're no longer fighting anymore because you died on the cross with me. So enter into this rest. Stop trying to fight on your own. Stop trying to make this look like if it was you doing it. You died on a cross with me. Do you not remember this? Amen. And see, some people will say, well, you know what? I don't believe in all raising the dead business. Really? We do it every day. We do it every day. Every time you get into the flesh, you're raising the dead. Every time you want to have it your way, you're raising the dead. Every time you don't want to obey what God has for you to do, you're raising the dead. So you have the power to raise the dead like he said you do. But we're, we're, we're looking at others. I've never raised the dead. No, he's not talking about others. He's talking about you. <laughs> Has anybody here ever raised the dead? Everybody better say yes. Yes, we have. Because when you try to have it your way, Burger King. Are you with me? But watch this. Enter into his rest. He will fight for you. The battle belongs to the Lord. Whatever concerns this world is already overcome. He said, be of good cheer, for I have already, what? Overcome the world. So, guys, listen to me. Yes, it's okay. You start off dependent on the world system because you were trained up to do that. You know, we go get a job. We get a paycheck. We get a raise every now and then. All right, great. The world system, it brings you bologna to go take it home and make you a sandwich. You get the bread and the, the turkey and the chicken, and you go and get all that. And that's what we do here on this, in this world system, right? But watch. We were trained up to do that. But listen, you weren't born to do that. You were not created to do that. You were created to be supplied by Elohim, by El Shaddai, by Jehovah Jireh. Hey, by Jehovah, come on, y'all with me? You, you, were, you were created to be dependent on him and for him to be your provider. 
You were created for that he can bring the rest you need. You're not going to find the rest in your spouse. Even though as much as we'd like to, you're not going to find it there, family. And I'm not trying to bring division. I'm trying to give you knowledge so that you can understand that he is a learning process. You have to learn how he does things. He said, watch how I do it, and I will show you how to have real rest. But we're looking at, we're, we're, we're too busy looking horizontal too much. How do they do it? How do you do it? How did you do it? Hey, what did you do? What did you do to this? What did you do to that? And God's like, I got the plan the whole time, man, to even do it better than how they did it. How? And it's going to be done through rest. You're not going to have to worry. You're not going to have to be concerned. You're not going to have to be frustrated. None of that. You will supersede all that because he said, if you come unto me with whatever it is that you have, you come unto me and I will give you rest. Ease, come on, ease, you'll live freely and easily. You got people telling you it's hard to serve, it's hard to serve God. Well, it is if you don't learn how to rest. It is. And it's, you're going to continuously, and you're going to keep teaching that. Yeah, I got struggle, the pain, you got to go through the suffering. That's what Jesus is all about. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you. See, Adam in the Garden of Eden, he messed it up for all of us. Okay? So now he got kicked out of the garden, and he had to go out there and figure life out. He had to work and labor and figure all this life out, got frustrated, didn't know how to do it, because God was no longer giving him the instructions that he needed. Okay? But see... When the last Adam came into play, he recovered and restored a relationship that was initially supposed to be done in ease, freely, listening to an instruction, and getting to the point where he has rest in his life. That's you guys. You are part of the last Adam. There's Eve, so don't let her eat apples no more or fruit, whatever it was. Because the snake is still around. And he's still trying to talk you into. God knows that if you eat of that fruit, you will be just like him. See, he's still trying to tell people that. He knows that if you eat of that fruit, you will, you will be just like him. But see, here's the realization. Adam should have snapped and said, I'm already just like him. Come on, see? I am already made in his image. I am already made in his likeness. I am already part of the Sabbath. I can enter into that rest anytime I want to. 